everyone, it's Mike here. Thanks for joining me for another Art Journal page start to finish video. Uh, what's this? Oh, I have an incoming message. Oh, it's a video message. Let's see who it is. This is a new mission for Mike Deacon. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, involves following a set of instructions to create an art journal page. This is a highly secret project and involves the following steps. Step 1. Apply a layer of gesso and use your stamps to make impressions into it. Step 2. Apply paint using bubble wrap. Step 3. Add two pieces of ephemera. Step 4. Turn your page upside down for the next three prompts. Step 5. Add paint. Spray with water to make drips. Step 6. Draw random shapes. Step 7. Doodle around the edges of your page. Step 8. Tint any medium and apply through a stencil. Step 9. Add book text. Step 10. Cut circles out of scratch paper. This is your mission if you choose to accept it. This message will self-destruct in two seconds. Hmm, how interesting. I suppose I'd better get on and do it. Mission accepted. So step one is to add a layer of gesso and to stamp into it. Now for this, I'm using my, well the last page in my Strathmore Mixed Media Journal and I'm using Winter and Newton White Gesso and I'm just going to liberally apply a coat of that across the double page spread. And before I heat set it, I'm going to use this script stamp that I purchased while on holiday in the US from Michaels. And I'm just going to press the stamp into the gesso. Now, I obviously didn't lay the gesso on thick enough because the impression wasn't really as deep as I wanted it to be. You can see it, but it's not as deep as I wanted it to be. But it's definitely there. So now I'm giving it a very good blast on the heat tool to make sure that everything is nice and dry before we move on to the next step. So Peter's step number two is to add paint with a piece of bubble wrap. So for this I'm using the Tim Holtz New Colour for 2015, this was January's, which is cracked pistachio and a piece of bubble wrap. Now I've just applied some of the paint down onto my craft mat and then I'm just using the bubble wrap as a stamp and I'm going to liberally apply that across the page. So I'm just going to give it a little blast with the heat tool and then because Peter didn't say that I couldn't use more than one colour, I'm adding Mermaid Lagoon Distress Paint in exactly the same way. I have cleaned off the bubble wrap first.
So now I have my two layers of Distress Paint applied with a piece of bubble wrap. I'm giving it a real good heat with the heat tool or a blast with the heat tool to make sure it's all nice and dry before we move on to step number three. So step number three is add two pieces of ephemera. Now for this I'm using the Mod Podge matte because I've discovered that this is just like any other matte medium and it's you know a really decent price point. So for my two pieces of ephemera I'm using a piece of paper which is a sheet or piece of sheet music and I'm applying that down onto my page and applying it first to the page then on the back of the piece of paper and then I'm going to go over the top with the Mod Podge to seal it in position. Now I'm adding some more of that Mod Podge up the page because this is where I'm going to add my second piece of ephemera. Now my second piece of ephemera is a piece of a calendar that was cut out from a piece of Happy Meal sent to me by Eva LeVay from Eva LeVay Arts. Uh, if you haven't seen any of Eva's um, art journal work then I suggest you pop over and have a look for her on YouTube. So I'm now just applying a coat of that Mod Podge over the top of the owl to make sure that it's all nicely sealed down and in position. And then I'm going to get out my heat tool again and give it a bit of a blast to make sure it's all nice and dry and sealed. Before I do that, obviously, I'm having a bit of a tidy up. So here I'm just checking to make sure that everything is nicely stuck down and there's no bubbles underneath any of the paper that I've stuck on. So step number four, Peter says I have to turn my journal upside down for step number five. Okay, and step number five is to add drips to the page. Now again, I'm using my Dilutions paints, so I'm just putting some of the paint onto my craft mat and adding some water to make sure that or, or to make it into a runny consistency and then I'm going to apply those drips down the page. Now because it's upside down I'm tipping it the right way up if you know what I mean so the drips run down the page from the top. So again, because Peter didn't say that I couldn't use more than one colour, I'm going to use the Dilutions white linen paint and do exactly the same thing and add a few splatters too.
Now I'm using white because I wanted a more subtle and muted effect with the drips. I didn't want to overpower the page by adding a real dark colour or a high contrasting colour to what's already there. So there is white in the background and there is white in the owl as well and there is some off-white in the paper that I've already stuck down so it does all follow the same colour theme. And there you can see me adding some splatters of white paint across the page as well because what is an art journal page without splatters? For me, it just doesn't feel complete. So again, another quick tidy up and get rid of those white splatters from my craft mat and then give it a heat blast and then move on to step number six. Now six is a, uh, an instruction to draw random shapes on the page. So I'm using my food ball pen and because I've already used circles with the bubble wrap stamp, that is my chosen shape that I'm going to draw randomly around the page. So I'm just going to do some scribbly circles which follows the same kind of look and feel of the page. And the food ball pen obviously is perfect for writing and drawing over an acrylic painted surface. So still using the food ball pen, step number seven, I'm instructed to doodle a border around the edges of my page. So continuing with the pen, I'm just going to doodle a quick checker pattern all the way around the page, and then I'm going to divide it up and then color it in. But because you don't want to sit there and watch me do that, I've speeded up to four times its normal speed. Okay, border done. So step number eight is to tint a medium and apply through a stencil. So my tint, I'm using lemon zest acrylic paint from Dilutions and my paste, I'm using the heavy capable modeling paste from Winsor & Newton. Now I'm going to put some of the paste on my craft mat and then I'm going to add some of the paint to the paste and then mix it all together so that effectively colors the modeling paste and then I'm going to grab a stencil and then apply that randomly around the page. I was very pleasantly surprised actually after mixing the paint in with the modelling paste that the paint didn't dull down very much. It still stayed extremely vibrant so there's a nice tip. Adding the Dilutions paint to your modelling paste you can create whatever colour you want. And if you missed my little on-screen note there, this is the Mini Scallop Flower Stencil from TCW, the Crafters Workshop. So here you can see me removing some of that excess modelling paste from the page just using a baby wipe. So I'm doing that before I get the heat tool on it and set that modelling paste in place.
Okay, so step number nine was to add book text to my page. So here I am, I've just got a piece of, or well, one single page that I've taken from an old book and I've just torn it into strips and I will be applying that randomly around the page using the same Mod Podge that I did before. Okay, so the final step, number 10, is to add scratch paper circles to my page. So again, this is a piece of uh, jelly printed paper that was sent to me in Happy Mail. Again, I believe it was from Eva Ave. So I'm using a couple of punches from Stampin' Up! And I'm just punching out some circles. I'm doing three at one and three eighths and one at three at an inch. And then I'm going to use um, those circles and apply those onto the page in visual triangles around. Now I'm using um, both sides. So the larger circles, I'm going to use um, the darker side and the smaller circles, I'm going to use the lighter side for contrast. Now I've chosen the paper because it still has the same color theme as the background that I've already created. So it's got blues and greens on there too. Just a little note on keeping with the same colour theme. You may have wondered why I put yellow um, paste through the stencil. Well, if you look at the owl's eyes, the owl has yellow eyes, so the colour does actually fit, just in case you were wondering. So with step 10 completed, I'm just going to uh, apply that down and then just give everything a nice little coat to make sure it's all stuck down and then get the heat tool out, give it a blast to make sure it's all stuck down. And then because I think it definitely needs a quote, I'm going to bring out my Dymo Letra Tag machine and I'm going to add a little bit of a quote onto the page. So there's my trusty, le trusty letter tag machine and the quote that I'm sticking down uh, once I've actually peeled all the backing off is taken from an English uh, or an old English nursery rhyme and it reads or the full nursery rhyme is a wise old owl lived in an oak the more he saw the less he spoke the less he spoke the more he heard 
why can't we all be like that wise old bird? Now, just interestingly enough, that nursery rhyme was also used on some US wartime posters. And they used that, that same um, poem, and then underneath on the posters, they wrote underneath it, silence means security. So still actually quite pertinent today. So out comes the food ball pen, and I'm just going to outline those two quote blocks just with a little sketchy border all the way around just to make them pop a little bit and then because I can't leave well enough alone I'm also going to go around the circles and just apply sketchy circles around those scratch paper circles that I've already stuck down. And that is my mission inspiration page inspired by the prompt of Peter Thompson or also known as Lady Petals on YouTube. Well I hope you enjoyed that mission inspiration. If you want to see the version that I set for Peter then why not pop across to her YouTube channel. Her address I will put in the description area of this video below. If you have enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. Stay tuned for more videos. See you soon. Bye!